Okay, okay, stop. Let's, let's calm this down a bit. For several weeks now, we have been bombarded with updates on the outbreak of the so-called coronavirus. But let's pause for a second, get back to the start, and pose the questions. Why is all this happening? And who is to blame? The answer might not be to everyone's liking. We are constantly encroaching on the natural world and animal habitats, bringing us into closer contact with wild animals and any viruses they may carry. We hunt wild animals, cage them, and sell them at our markets, nicely preparing the ground for zoonotic diseases and viruses to jump from animals to humans. Just like the new coronavirus did, SARS-CoV-2. 75% of new or emerging infectious diseases in people come from animals like Ebola, HIV, SARS, and now COVID-19. Ever since the outbreak of SARS in 2002, scientists have been warning that it's not a question of if, but when a new disease will hit us. So let's have a look at where COVID-19 might have come from. Scientists assume that the original hosts were bats. One reason for this is the fact that the new SARS-CoV-2 has a lot in common with SARS-CoV-1, which was scientifically proven to have its origin in bats. Bats are flying reservoirs of viruses with pandemic potential, including up to 50 different coronaviruses. They incubate the virus without getting sick or showing any symptoms of the disease. This is probably because they seem to have adapted to the energetic demands of flight and so are better at repairing DNA damage, but science is yet to solve the riddle in full. Bats gather in large colonies, fly long distances and can be found on every continent they can pass along viruses in their feces and saliva. This was probably what happened with SARS when masked palm civets became the intermediate hosts of the virus. How the transmission from the bats to the palm civets worked, most likely because they were farmed and not all of these farms had a roof. Uh, so if uh, bats were flying over these, um, these farms, it could have happened that um, excretions of the bats uh, dropped into these, uh, into these farms and the animals picked it up by that way. This is the most likely uh, explanation. In the case of the current COVID-19 outbreak, the intermediate host hasn't been officially confirmed yet. Plenty of theories are circulating. The first one, snakes. This idea instantly roused suspicions. Should the virus go from a mammal to a non-mammal and thereafter again to the mammal, a human? This is rather a bit unlikely. So a mammal quickly became the leading suspect, the pangolin. Researchers have found that samples of coronavirus taken from wild pangolins and infected patients are 99% identical. The way the pangolin got the virus could have gone something like this. Somewhere in the skies above China, a bat releases fecal droppings as it flies, leaving a trace of coronavirus in its excrement on the leaves below. A pangolin snuffling for insects picks up the infection and incubates the virus in its body. From there on, the new virus circulates among wildlife. This wouldn't affect us human beings if we left animals in the wild. But wild animal farming and the illegal wildlife trade has put humanity in a dangerous position. Farming wildlife for commercial purposes is permitted in China. 54 wild species are officially approved for commercial breeding and trade, like civets. 
This situation creates ideal conditions for viruses. Wild animals are squeezed together, peeing and pooping on one another, eating the same fruit and drinking the same water. It's easy for a virus to spread among the animals. Breeding pangolins just isn't possible. Pangolins have a low reproductive rate and experience high levels of captive stress. To date, only 10 pangolins have been bred in captivity, so any rumors of commercial breeding are thought to be false. All pangolins in trade are most likely from the wild. But let's go back to our infected civets at the farm. As soon as they're ready for sale, they're transported to a market. If the virus hasn't already been passed from animals to humans at the farm, its next big chance is right here, at the Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market. This is where the current COVID-19 virus most likely originated. This market is huge. 50,000 square meters and over a thousand tenants. It's reported to be the largest seafood wholesale market in central China, but it is also known for the sale of exotic wild animals. Too many Chinese people eat meat or other parts of rare animals. There's a widespread belief that freshly slaughtered animals are more nutritious, and that's what people are after at the wet market. The term wet market actually comes from the selling of seafood, which is wet, and these markets have wet floors and everything is wet on the floor. The way I see it though, they're also wet because of all the bodily secretions from these wildlife, and um, that's why we use that term wet market. Some of these markets can actually have 30, 40 species, wildlife species, at the same time in the market. The animals are alive on these wet markets, so they are actually shedding. Um, they're pooping, they're, they're sneezing, they're coughing, so it's very easy to exchange bodily fluids. Then they're being slaughtered on site as well, so then you'll have the blood as well, which is being mixed up. And you know, you, wooden cutting boards, you can imagine, you have everything. You have a bird slaughtered, 10 minutes later you have a uh, tortoise there. It's a, just an absolute perfect cauldron of contagion and a breeding ground for new viruses. It's likely that the SARS-CoV-2 virus made the initial jump at this market, with a pangolin as its intermediate host. But how did this highly endangered species end up at Wuhan's wet market? The answer? The illegal wildlife trade. The pangolin is the world's most illegally traded mammal, far surpassing the poaching and trafficking rates of elephants, rhinos, and other high-profile species. Their elusive nature has made it difficult to estimate how many are left in the wild. There are smuggling routes for pangolin scales from Africa and parts of Asia to China, and others for whole pangolins which are transported live or frozen. According to a 2016 report, more than a million pangolins were poached during the previous decade. From 2007 to 2016, some 90,000 were smuggled into China. In 2019, after a long-term investigation, over 23 tons of pangolin scales were seized by Chinese customs officials. China's rapidly emerging middle class is driving the illegal trade. Pangolin meat has become a luxury item and status symbol. The scales are believed to heal wounds and cure rheumatism and skin diseases. The price of live pangolins has increased from about 7 US dollars per pound in the 1990s to around 300 US dollars today. The wildlife trade in general is big business in China. It brings in 520 billion yuan, which is equivalent to 74 billion US dollars and it employs more than 14 million people. China has had wildlife trading bans on the books for three decades, but they haven't prevented pangolins from becoming the most trafficked mammals in the world. Now, with the new virus outbreak, the Chinese government has suddenly taken action, shutting down 20,000 farms. The country's top legislative body announced a permanent ban on the trade and consumption of live wild animals for food. But it also said that the trade of wild animals for medicine, pets and scientific research will be subject to strict approval and quarantine procedures. So can we pin our hopes on China's latest steps? 
A ban is always a very sensitive thing, too vague and it paves the way for lawbreaking, too strict and it could send the entire wildlife trade underground. What we need is a shift in people's mindsets, because pandemics are on the rise. We need to contain the processes that drive them, and not just individual diseases themselves. Only time will tell if we've been fast and smart enough.